Huawei and China's top chip maker have built an advanced processor to power its latest smartphone. It's a sign that Beijing is making early progress in a nationwide push to overcome U.S. sanctions. Huawei has been at the center of intensifying U.S. trade curbs on Chinese businesses, which Washington says are based on national security concerns. Let's speak now to Bloomberg's Peter Elstrom, who has details here. So, Peter, strip this story down for us, if you could. Bloomberg worked with a, a specialist research firm on this to take apart this new phone, this new smartphone from Huawei. What did, what did uh, the investigators find? Uh, that's right. Uh, so Huawei quietly dropped this phone last week into the market, and it caused quite a stir. Uh, it's an advanced phone. It's called the Mate uh, 60. Uh, but there were a lot of questions about exactly what kind of technology was inside the phone. Huawei had had to back out of the smartphone market because it didn't have access to the most advanced chips, the kind that would power, say, the iPhone, uh, for example. So it wasn't clear exactly where it got these chips or how it got these chips. Unlike most technology companies that love to talk about specs, while we didn't say anything about the specs here, especially the key ones. So what we did is we bought one of the phones and then we worked with this firm, Tech Insights, which does uh, breakdowns, teardowns of products uh, professionally. And they looked at the components inside uh, the, the phone. And what they found was very, very interesting. They found that there is an advanced semiconductor uh, inside the phone that's made by SMIC, that's a Chinese uh, chip making company that's not known to have these kinds of capabilities. They were able to make the phone at what's, what's called 7 nanometer technology, which is quite advanced. Um, and in that case, they were, they were able to produce a processor that was much more advanced than people had anticipated SMIC was actually capable of doing. So it's a sign of China's progress in getting around some of these U.S. restrictions on the kind of technology it has access to, particularly for a company like Huawei, which is blacklisted by the U.S. government. Yes, I was going to ask, so why does the speed of the chips inside this Huawei phone, why does it matter? And you've given us a bit on that already. It signifies then that China is moving faster than, than, uh, than the rest of the world had anticipated in moving to, to these faster chips. Is that the basics of the story? That, that's right. That's right. Uh, the U.S., you, you'll recall that last year the Biden administration impo imposed export controls on China. And it was trying to draw a line in the sand where China would not have access to chips that were more sophisticated than 14 nanometer, which is about uh, seven years beyond uh, the latest cutting edge technology. And now China has shown that actually internally in China it can make uh, these seven nanometer chips, which are only about five years be behind the latest technology. So it's a step forward. There's much that we don't know about this chip. We don't know how, what kind of volumes uh, Huawei and SMIC can make together of these chips. We don't know whether they can make them at a cost that's competitive on a global market. But it is a sign that they're able to make some progress in this area that's been so contentious um, and is something where the U.S. has tried to limit their ability to kind of delve into these kinds of technologies in the future. Yeah, and really interesting, Peter, that they dropped this phone so quietly then, uh, given the, 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 uh, the obvious interest in that subject. So will this affect the geopolitical clash then between Beijing and Washington? If Beijing is moving faster on its own than anticipated, does that limit the effectiveness of uh, the Washington sanctions? Well, it certainly is going to get the attention of the U.S., the Biden administration, and particularly the Commerce Department, which has been at the forefront of trying to impose these restrictions. It's a sign that the sanctions that they have in place right now may not be as effective as they thought they had been in the past. It seems like they are making some progress here. Inside of China, state media picked this up right away, and they kind of trumpeted the accomplishments. I think they're trying to show that they feel like they can make progress in technology, and semiconductors in particular, even without the support of the United States or even with these U.S. sanctions, which are very, very severe.